Okay, so last time we um, introduced an entire family of psi functions. And this really didn't uh, affect the complexity of, of things too much. The only new rule you have to know is when we have something like psi 1 of 0, for instance. This just equals the previous psi function and uh, the limit of how far that can go. So in this case, the beckman howard ordinal, if we had, let's say, psi 3 of 0, this would equal psi 2 of epsilon omega 2 plus 1. And we could even write down a generalized equation for this. So let's say uh, psi a of 0 is equal to psi a minus 1 epsilon omega a minus 1 plus 1. Okay, so let's do an example with uh, psi 1, let's say. How would we deconstruct f psi 1 of 1 in the fast ring hierarchy? Well, first thing I'm going to do is we're going to use a rule that we learned with the original psi function, and this is totally valid with this too, which is uh, psi 1 of 1, which is uh, a number in here. We can do an infinite tower of this, basically, and take the third element of the fundamental sequence. So we can think of this, basically, as the fundamental sequence. Uh, I'm going to write this down. Phi 1 of 0, phi 1 of 0 to the phi 1 of 0, and then phi 1 of 0 to the phi 1 of 0 to the phi 1 of 0, blah, 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 blah. And uh, we're diagonalized into 3, so we want this one right here. So we simply go f phi 1 of 0, phi 1 of 0, phi 1 of 0 of 3. Now what's phi 1 of 0? Well, basically, all we do is we change this into its corresponding uh, previous phi function, which in this case is right up here. Uh, the Backman Howard ordinal. So let's just, um, to avoid having to rewrite things, let's just uh, replace that. So this is equal to psi epsilon omega plus one. So how do we uh, diagonalize this? Well, inside here is basically an infinite tower of omega. So we can think of this here as the fundamental sequence. Psi of omega, psi of omega to the omega, psi of... Uh, Omega to the omega to the omega. That's one. That's a possible uh, fundamental sequence for the Backman Howard ordinal. So we can take the third element here, and then replace it here. So we end up with f psi one of zero psi one of zero psi of omega to the omega to the omega of three. And uh, if you remember in a previous video. I showed you how, starting with this, we could begin to deconstruct that. So basically, that's exactly what we would do here. We would deconstruct this into its constituent parts, which, uh, which blows them to this big, complicated mess. And then we just have uh, this on top of these two huge ordinals here, which would need to be deconstructed. So um, we kind of know where to go from here. So that's going to be good for this example here. Whatever. Just to uh, give you an idea that includes... Uh, one of the other psi functions besides the one that we've already done, basically. So uh, another example, let's do one with uh, an infinite ordinal this time. So let's say we have f psi of omega of 0. So first thing we want to do is we want to break this up into its fundamental sequence, which is psi 1 of 0, psi 2 of 0, psi 3 of 0. And we're diagonalizing it to 3, so it's the third element here. So this just gets diagonalized to f psi 3 of 0 of 3. And then using our new rule, basically, this uh, formula up here, we turn this into the previous psi function and the limit to how far that can go. So this turns into f psi 2 epsilon omega 2 plus 1 of 3. And this uh, diagonalizes in the same kind of way as uh, this one up here. So you can imagine a fundamental sequence of increasing uh, exponential powers of omega. And this would turn into f psi 2 omega 2 to the power of omega 2 to the power of omega 2. And then we can keep on going like this, whatever. We could uh, define a fundamental sequence and then diagonalize this guy by plugging in uh, previous entries of the fundamental sequence, and so on and so forth. And uh, I'm going to make one more note about uh, terminology. I keep on making these um, these additions, whatever, but it'll, it'll help us in the long run. 
just uh, for simplicity of writing things down. Basically, whenever you have um, a psi function and then you have uh, these guys inside, the omegas, it's kind of assumed that these ones here are going to be corresponding to this here. So you don't actually really need to write down the subscript here. I mean, you could hypothetically come up with an ordinal, like let's say we write down a, a psi 3 of omega 3 plus omega 2 plus omega 1. So you can make some kind of like ambiguous thing where it, it includes all different kinds of things in which the subscript would be very important so you know which one's which. But whenever we start with an ordinal like this, the deconstruction process will never have something like this. You're never going to have some kind of Im ambiguous um, collection of omegas where they're all different uh, subscripts, basically. So if I have something like this, basically, if I write this in the future, it's going to be assumed that I mean omega 3 or the corresponding omega that will unstick this function here, basically. So that's just another another little rule there. So basically, um, when you deconstruct things, there's no ambiguity. The omega in here will always correspond to its psi function. So just uh, keep that in mind as we move forward. I'm going to make a little note. Um, sometimes the temptation when uh, deconstructing these um, these psi functions is to switch over to the old format. So let's let's say, for instance, I'll, I'll give you an example because I'm not making much sense right now. Okay, let's say we have psi three of uh, omega to the five. Well, we could use our rule basically that um, omega to the five is similar to a phi function that's a plus one. So in this case, it would be phi six of um, omega plus one, and this would be inside the phi, uh, or sorry, psi two function. So we could technically switch this over to this and start using phi functions inside this whole thing. Uh, the only problem is you'll find as you start to deconstruct something like this, you'll end up with um, something like this, basically. And when this happens, you have to know that... Um, This part here just collapses to capital Omega or whatever, just because this is so big that if you plug it into basically anything, you plug it into Epsilon, it's still just going to equal this. You plug it into Gamma even, it's still just going to equal this. So this really, really complicates things. It makes working with five functions very, very difficult. So to avoid that altogether, we're not going to do this. If we see something like this, even though we can turn it into something like a five function, it doesn't make it easier. The easiest way to do this is to stick with collapsing functions. So, uh, for instance, in this one, um, what we would do instead is we would break one of these things off. So we'd end up with F psi 3 capital Omega to the 4 times Omega. We'd write out a fundamental sequence for this starting at uh, psi 3 of 0. Then we'd move on to psi 3 replace this guy with the first element. So we'd end up with this here times psi 3 of 0. And then the next element uh, we'll write down psi 3, psi 4 times this whole thing here. So we'd uh, continue in this, in this way of creating fundamental sequences, uh, breaking off omegas. And uh, the only time that we switch over to the old format, basically, is when we get to something like... Uh, psi of zero, that's the only time. And then we turn this into an epsilon naught because really we have no choice. There's no smaller ordinal in terms of infinite collapsing functions. We have no choice but to turn this into epsilon naught. But that's the only time because this is a much, much neater way of uh, deconstructing these things. So we'll, uh, we'll do some more examples in the next video.